I, I set out to kind of bark at the security moon. That's what I set out to do. I set out to call out the terrible practices that exist in our industry that make us that make other people not want to invite us to office parties, right? That gets us the reputation of the the um the company that likes to say no or the department that likes to say no. And I think I, I want to be the voice that other people wish they had but can't do it for whatever reason. And maybe that's where the mental health comes in, to turn around and call bullshit on all of that stuff and on all those people, you know? And more and more people are being turned on to the fact that um, fun is required, especially after COVID and stuff like that. Fun is required. People aren't engaged enough. And, and I keep telling people, if you want to get more people to pay awareness in the awareness side of things, you have to give awareness a personality. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the 401 Access Denied podcast. I'm Joseph Carson, Chief Security Scientist and Advisor CISO at Delenia, and I'm the host for today's episode. I'm really excited. Um, this is something I've been waiting for a long time. This episode has been in the works for, for you know, I've <laughs> had the plans for, for quite some time, and I'm really excited to be joined by the most entertaining person in cybersecurity, um, Ian Murphy. Uh, so, Ian, over to you. To, can, can you give us a bit of introduction about yourself, what you do, and what what, uh, what brings enjoyment to your life? Um, yeah, thanks, Joe. Thanks for the for the lovely kind words. As a as a as a working class lad from Liverpool, I take praise very difficultly. So, if I <laughs> if I'm not effervescent in my thanks, that's just just my upbringing. And but I bless you, bless you for saying those things. <laughs> Um, so, so what do I do? Well, what do I, uh, find enjoyable things? I, I essentially, um, uh, do stupid videos on social media <laughs> and for awareness campaigns that hopefully brings a little bit of fun back into cyber security with the, with the main aim of helping those of us not in cyber security mm -hmm. increase our cyber savviness. So my thinking behind that is if I can get people engaged in a one, two, three, four minute video, instead of boring the living daylights out of them with, with presenters who shouldn't be let anywhere near another human being, to be quite honest, <laughs> then, then I think I've done my job. I think I've got people engaged. And my whole raison d'etre really is to help the people like my dad or my wife or my mm. son or my brother or, or, or my wider family who don't have a clue about cybersecurity mm. and will never want to have a clue about cybersecurity. I just want to help them pause a little bit. I just want to help them pause. And even if that means picking the phone up to me and saying, mm -hmm. Ian, you're in IT, what about this? I, I've, I've done my job then. By the way, if mm. people do watch this podcast and then pick the phone up to me, you're getting hung up on straight away. <laughs> I'm just... I'm just <laughs> so, um, so so, so I've I've been in cyber about thirty years. Mm. Kind of fell into it in the early nineties, as most people do, mm. because um, be, because I wasn't a good enough footballer. My dream was <laughs> a footballer. Um, no, nobody wakes up and goes, "Oh, I want to be in cyber." It's like people waking no. up and saying, "Oh, I want to be a bass player." Nobody ever does it, right? <laughs> so, um, so I I kind of fell into cyber after a failed football career where I managed to play semi professionally, but just not good enough to make that much of a living out of it. Um, and the other reason is I once lost a million quid live on TV. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> so, who want, was it? Who wants to be a millionaire? Or, no, it was, it, it it was, was a deck show called Red or Black. That was back. That's what it was. Power. Yes. Um, I remember that video. Watching it was it. a simple choice, Red or Black, right? So you have to do a bunch of stupid games, got to the end, live TV, 9 million viewers, yeah. Red or Black. I'm a Liverpool support. I chose Red, right? Of course I did. Uh, and it came up black, and um, yeah, it was uh, that. That's a sober, sober an experience to be the first person to have done that. But, but as I say, I've been in cyber thirty years. Uh, I've kind of done everything from working in government to working in uh, with software vendors to working in consultancies to now running my own business and doing my own consultancy. And I've worked for myself for the past sixteen, seventeen years because mm -hmm. really nobody else will employ me. And I have a distaste for people in general. I don't like being around people in general. To, to you, you, be quite honest, you, you, you like talking to people, though. Oh, I, 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 <laughs> but but, but I, I don't mean that in a nasty view, way. I, I mean that in the fact that I think I'm an introverted extrovert. So, so put me in a room full of people I don't know, 
uh, mm-hmm. to network. I'm a wallflower. I'm stood against the wall. I'm, I'm clutching my bottle of beer or whatever, thinking, is there anybody here who wants to talk to me about football, right? Because I don't, I, I don't do chit-chat. I'm not very good at it. Um, but put me in a room full of people, mm-hmm. of friends, or put me, give me a couple of beers mm-hmm. and point me at a karaoke, and you can't get me off it. So, <laughs> so it's, stra- it's strange that I would, in later life, consider a career as a stand-up comedian because it's the worst thing in the world for that type of feeling. For that know? type of character. For, for that, for yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> which, which is, it's always good to challenge yourself. So, And I actually, did, we, we have so much similar backgrounds, uh, you know, even, even for myself, you know, I still, <laughs> still, still, still trying to, to kick off my football career. <laughs> even today, it's, it doesn't go so well. And even a few weeks ago, I got a good headbutt to the jaw. Oh, wow. And I was actually, I'm so lucky for this podcast that, um, I actually ended up with a cracked tooth, oh, gosh. and uh, I just had the dentist. Uh, it was on uh, Tuesday this week, so I finally, finally got the, the tooth repaired. But yeah, I, I, I just can't stop playing football. I, I can't stop, uh, you know, having having that wish that my football career would kick off, but it's not. Yeah. Um, it's more for me just to. It's it's that kind of getting away, just being physical, having a challenge that's outside of what we do. Because for me, I mean, we started our careers back in the nineties. Yeah, and I don't know about you, but I always thought that when I started the career, there was a lot more opportunity to to have fun. It was enjoyable. You always you had a laugh. I remember back in you know even doing I think it was Windows ninety five training. I remember going. I used to work for the uh, uh, the NHS and the uh, it was actually the Northern uh, Southeast Belfast Trust. Um, and uh, and I remember going and training all the people who had these big typewriters on their desks how to use Windows ninety five yeah. and how to basically you know do uh, word processing. And it was, oh my goodness, the laughs I had, you know, when I went into some people's desk and there was a, you know, a, a, a can of, you know, a, a drinks can sitting in the CD tray. Um, the mouse was on the floor and they're, they're whacking the mouse with their food. Um, the, the, uh, just the fun that you had. Um, but f- for me, I think over the years, I think some of the, the you know, it's got very serious. Mm-hmm. It's got a very mainstream news, and it's got to a very, very scary place. Have you had the same feeling? Have you felt that we've gotten to the point where you know cybersecurity has become such a serious thing that um, we're not? It's not as fun anymore. Um, is that something that you've felt, felt over the years? It's it's the thing that drove me to to do what I'm doing. To be mm-hmm. quite honest, I've, I've you know I've got a whole 15, 20 minute cyber routine around that type of stuff, and and I think I I, I think partly it's it's socially in the era that we're in now where everybody's afraid of offending somebody or you can't say no well you can say whatever you like you know there may be consequences for it but you can actually say whatever you like i think i I think if you intentionally set out to offend Mm -hmm. people there's something wrong with you right i think you're 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 a dis dis a a kind of displeasurable character Mm -hmm. um or an unpleasant character, I meant to say. Um, but but if actually somebody takes offense at something you've said, um, mm-hmm. there's not nothing you can do about that because they've had an emotional reaction to something you've mm-hmm. said, and they're asking you to do something about their emotions, which is something we can't do, we can't control. We can barely control our own mm-hmm. emotions without worrying about other people's. And there's a special kind of character as well who takes mm-hmm. offense on other people's behalf you know, and I'm like, what's that all about? Because and it's oh, you can't say that, or I, I I was offended because you said that about that, and and you're actually talking to the person who they're getting offence on behalf by, and you're like, well, well, what's your point? Do, do 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 you just want somebody to talk to? I'll talk to you if you want, hmm. but but if you come over and ask me to do something that I've got no control over, mm-hmm. my my response is going to be really really short. It's going to be two words, and the second one will be off. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, so it's it's so I'm, cyber off. Is that cyber off? <laughs> that's the reason I call my company cyber off. Nobody else gets it, right? That's the reason I called it. It's an insult to people. Now, I know that could limit business, right? But the idea was, I personally think, um, if you're not telling somebody to fuck off once a day, at least once in the IT industry, you're not paying enough attention, right? So instead of doing that and people getting upset, because people get upset if you swear at them. Not me. I don't particularly. I've had. I've had people in the crowd shouting obscenities at me in left, right, and centre. So um, it's not a problem for me. Um, but that's why, uh, that's why I thought of cyber off, because um, the, the weird thing about cyber is everybody uses it now as a kind of mystique term. I work in cyber. Oh, it's, a bit, oh, it's a bit James Bondy. What people forget about cyber 
is that back in the early 90s, two cyber was a verb and two cyber meant to have online relations with people. Mm -hmm. I cybered with them last night, which yeah. is essentially you knocking one out over a webcam, right? <laughs> and that's the problem, that people are using a term that back in the day meant you were a wanker. So so, so that's, that's where we are in the industry, that we're going around proudly telling everybody we're in cyber. And I'm thinking in the back of my mind, you've just admitted to being a wanker. You know, so... So that, that's where cyber off comes from. It's like a tongue-in-cheek. So if anybody's talking bollocks about cyber, which mm. people invariably do most of the time, mm. invariably, then I can just shout mm. at them cyber off. And if they say, what was that? I'll just say, oh, I thought I asked you what. I thought you asked me what my company name was. See? <laughs> totally. It's a, it's a, totally good, it's a good way of, uh, yeah. To say. <laughs> I love it. It actually reminds me, when, when I went to university in the U.S., you know, being, being I'm, I'm Belfast born and bred yeah. um, and our <laughs> saying, native language is, is not the most pleasant Quite um, good. <laughs> and I went I went to university in the US and I must people must have thought I was the most vulgar person ever and I so I, I had to you know people were like what the fucking hell this you know this person's like saying everything you know f, f this and s this and and I was just like okay um, and it really, go, at that time in the U.S. when I went to university, I slowly turned into Father Ted. <laughs> so, <laughs> I literally, I literally uh, turned into Father Ted. Everything I had to change, I, I actually literally changed all the words. Um, it went to feck, and then it went to shite, and then it was sugar. Yeah. <laughs> and I, just, literally, I just changed the words to something that wasn't as bad. Um, and eventually, so, so that, that took some time for me to learn to, to just clean up, clean up my... my not, now when I go back to Belfast, people are like, where are you from? You're not from here. Yeah, you don't yeah. talk like this. Oh, <laughs> I, I, I get that when I go to, back to Liverpool as well, by the way. So <laughs> so I've been away over 28 years, and I've still got an accent. I know I've still got an accent. But but when I go back home, it's not as strong as it used to be, you know? So I still get that. I'm I'm a Southern softy when I go back to Liverpool now, you know? So, um, Which is hilarious for my friends, you know? Mm. But, uh, if, if nobody else takes anything from this, podcast other than they gen up on father ted and the back catalog <laughs> on craggy island our work is done here our work is done. we want bring father ted back it Absolutely. was so entertaining so that's so um and so yeah something it was you know for me it was it was uh just kind of always because i was living away from home from at that time father ted was on on air um yeah. and even dirty girls as well dirty girls is always yeah, yeah. Very good. Ticket, Very so, good. but so for me, absolutely. For me, I think we definitely, the message for security definitely needs to go simplify. And it, I, I think what we need to get in, I want to, for me, one of the things I've kind of got into passion in the past couple of years is to start bringing that fun back, mm -hmm. is to start bringing that simple message back. And I think what you're, you're doing is great because for me, I think I've seen a lot in the past couple of years, a lot of burnout. I've seen even with uh, my co-host who is unfortunately not here today, uh, Chloe, she talks about burnout and PTSD, um, that, you know, in this industry, it's sometimes ungrateful that you can go for, you know, months basically working around the clock, incident after incident, you know, threat, cyber threat at, at, at attacks and just continuously. And one of the things that I enjoy is that every now and again, when I turn around and look at my feed and I see a video from you, and it's, it's, you know what, I just pause everything else and I just watch it end to end because what you do in your message is you really take something that, you know, that a lot of vendors make overly complex and really get it scary where you bring it back down to reality. You make it much more, you, you, you're the translator for security challenges into everyday society mm -hmm. um, to what it really means for the impact and focusing on the impact. Um, is that something... How do we how do we you know make that much more of? How do we get vendors to also go into that direction as well, uh, and not, also not not to take themselves so seriously as well? Because I think vendors sometimes get into that very serious approach. Um, how do we how do we really kind of bring down those barriers? Bravery. It comes down to bravery. I'm not saying I'm brave. I'm 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 not I'm not saying that at all. But it comes down for a big vendor with a huge following and a social presence and stuff like that. Mm. It, it requires bravery to bring humor into the equation, right? Mm -hmm. You see it with uh, spec savers do it from time to time when a referee mm -hmm. makes a bad decision and they come out with a tweet that says, should have come to us or stuff like that. And I think that's genius type of marketing, right? Yeah. Or Paddy Power, not that I 
not that I uh, um, endorse gambling or anything like that, but, but their approach to marketing mm. is kind of great. And I think the problem with security is for so many years we've sold on fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Yep. And nobody's gone. So let's be honest. When we buy a security mm-hmm. product or technology, we're buying an insurance premium, really, right? We don't want the bad things to happen. It's a risk balance and all that type of good stuff. Mm-hmm. But in a sense, we're buying asteroid insurance, right? We're, we're yeah. hoping that none of the attacks happens to us. And we'll come out with scare stories and figures of, you know, within six months of having a breach, all SMEs go out of business and all that type of nonsense. So mm-hmm. we come out with spurious figures that aren't backed up by any six trillion is the amount that is lost to, mm-hmm. and all that. Type of, it's just like pick a figure out the air and go after it. Mm-hmm. I, I think I think when you have to be real and authentic with people, um, and you then want to start injecting fun with it, it's difficult mm-hmm. to change that tack from where you've been for a very long time, right? It's yeah. difficult to go. It's easy for me because that's me. That's my personality, and I get that. Mm-hmm. But let's say it was a big firm, one of the big awareness firms, no before or Proofpoint or CoFence or CybeSafe mm-hmm. or any of those big guys, mm-hmm. right? If it was any of those guys, I understand why they don't do it, and they don't do it because actually they they may have a lot of investment in customers who would think less of them for mm-hmm. that type of fun approach, and it, it's actually that you know. So when I've when I've spoken to customers or potential clients in the past and they've gone, not safe for work, despite the fact, despite mm-hmm. the fact that my videos have had millions and millions of views on social media, hundreds of thousands of comments and likes and mm-hmm. shares and all that type of stuff. Despite that fact of the engagement, they go, oh, I don't know if we would get behind that from a coaching mm-hmm. point of view. And it's not because... It's their culture. It's because the, the people making the decision as a CISO or in HR mm-hmm. are fearful of their own reputation if they're seen to back something that mm-hmm. may upset Karen or Dave in accounts. So they're happy mm-hmm. to keep the rest of the company risk-free from that type of offense, mm-hmm. but open the risk to more scams and more, more, uh, more threats coming mm-hmm. in because of a couple of people in the organization. And that just seems screwy to me, right? It seems screwy yeah. that, and because of though, I, I, I get that people may not like mm-hmm. swearing. I get that they may not like sexual innuendo. I get all of that. Don't watch it then. Mm-hmm. Don't watch it. Put it out with a disclaimer that says, this has adult content. Mm-hmm. It's almost like, Ricky Gervais says it, and he said it really well on his recent tour. It's almost like somebody puts up a, 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 a an advert of guitar lessons, and mm-hmm. you take off the the tab with the number up and phone them up and go, "I don't want any guitar lessons," you know, and you're like <laughs> raging at them for something that you don't want or you don't find. Mm-hmm. Don't do it. Don't do that no. stuff. Then, and 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 I also advocate for vendors or, mm-hmm. or, for, or for organizations to have that layered approach. So I don't think I'm the one and only answer. I don't think the other big boys are the one and only answer. We have a layered defense and everything else. Why mm-hmm. don't we have a layered approach in getting engagement and content and awareness mm-hmm. and fun to, to, mm-hmm. to people? Some people might like the more adult themes. Some people might like the stuff that Catherine and her team at Cybermaniacs mm-hmm. do, you know, with the puppets, which is great. Mm-hmm. There's a whole breadth of that spectrum. Don't tie your your, your colours to, to to one flag, and I think that's where mm-hmm. I think that's where vendors as well do get it wrong because they're serving themselves, they're serving their mm-hmm. shareholders. They want to make money and they want mm-hmm. to make profit, and they want to potentially be bought at some point in the future. So they're mm-hmm. not then going to go into a collaboration with me or and, with Cybermain. And it might not also work on a global audience as well. So yeah. you might want to because for for what the content you're creating, which I, I, I love it, um, is for me, I think it works great in UK and Ireland and probably, you know, parts of Europe. Yep. It may not kind of have the same in Asia. Um, yep. It may not have, you know, it, it might work well in Australia as well. Uh, yep. North America might be a little bit different. So yep. it, it might mean that you might have to tailor different things for different regions. I, I agree. Uh, rather I agree. Having, so. You're right, which is why I brought the animations mm-hmm. out. I brought mm-hmm. the animations out, which enables localization easier then, right? So instead of me on the screen with terrible dubbing, it's then just <laughs> the animation with with um, 
you you could you could do the dubbing with a with an actor within that local language and then you make the jokes relevant to that local language so so that's that's why the that that's why I did the animations I also deliberately made the animations safe for work as well so people don't have an excuse not to use them yeah you actually bring up one of the one of the lessons I learned many like it's gone a long time ago it was late 2000s, around 2008, 2009, I think it was. I was uh, doing a risk assessment for a large you know, transportation company. And we were going down the path. We, I mean, I've met, I think I've mentioned this before on the podcast. We were basically doing, a, it was a consultant had went and did a risk assessment. And we were going in and we were reviewing that risk assessment and making then recommendations of what they can do to, to, to minimize the risk. And what we realized was that they were, they were in silos. They had patch management doing over here. They were doing vulnerability assessments here. They were doing uh, asset inventory here. They were doing, you know, all, it was all silos and nothing was correlated. So they had no good visibility about, you know, the overall state of security. They had it in individual. They knew what, how many machines have been patched. But out of those machines have been patched, they didn't know which ones may have not had the, the last vulnerability scan run um, or whether, you know, the content that the person was looking at was safe. So at the time, we went and made recommendations. And our, our recommendations were, kind of disaster. We were going down the hammer, the enforcement of security and making employees feel uncomfortable. Um, we were preventing them from being able to do their work because it was taking them longer to do things. They had to think, you know, pause and performance and stuff. So one of the things, it was actually ironically, one of the days we were in uh, having the room in the company uh, location that the same day there was a bunch of kids that was in, it was like a bring your kid to school day or something like that, yeah. that they brought their kids in. And we were running, in, it was actually six months into the project, and we were running into, it was no success. We, we were needed to find quick alternatives. So one of the uh, people in the team said, "Let's. we might as well ask the kids. And we thought, hmm, that's an yep. interesting idea. We haven't tried that. Let's try it. So we actually went and we asked, can we get the kids in a room? We want to test our, like, our approach to see if there's anything we can do differently. And at the point was that, we were saying one of the questions to the kids was we're trying to communicate we're sending emails to all employees we're giving them this awareness training and policies and things they should and shouldn't do and the kids were like huh um why don't you try it in like you know like a comic style you know because you know text doesn't like mean anything to us so if you see an image that's more impactful we yeah. thought huh that was interesting so what we ended up doing was we took those policy-based emails about you know awareness about plugging in usb sticks and clicking in links and we turned them into cartoons we yeah. turn them into images, little basically images. Um, and to your point, when we did that, it actually made translation much easier because then you only need to change the certain text and you know different boxes, and it actually meant translation was much more easier um, globally that you could actually translate it for different reasons, different locations. And the yeah. the best thing was one of the I always remember the funny comment afterwards. It was one of the kids. Um, we were like, and, and "How do you think we should you know make this available? You know, do we?" You know, put it in everyone's desks. Do we, you know, make it? You know, how do we send this out? Do we, do we use email to send it out? And one of the kids put their hand up and said, "Why don't you put it in the back of the bathroom doors? Because every day someone needs to needs to take a crap." <laughs> We're like, that's actually a very smart thing. It was two minutes of uninterrupted time of IT security policy on the back of the bathroom doors, and it was it, for me. You know, you're absolutely right. How you, I think, how you've evolved your message going you know into that same path definitely yeah. shows that we do need to bring a lot more of that you know uh images and Im i think what also your message really gets on to is the impact is also what what is the impact of people um because i think that's also uh that's that same project uh that i worked on um we were looking who's the best people to be our communicators and go-to people within the business units and ultimately, the resulted in is that the best people to talk to was the victims, people who knew what it was like, who had been victims before. And they were the best people to portray the message. And that they became cyber mentors or cyber ambassadors, whatever, whatever kind of different names different companies have for it. But it was a great way to, you know, I've seen that evolution. And, and to what you're doing today, I think, really kind of has carried that on to a whole new way, delivery message, you know, delivery mechanism. So I think it's absolutely great. What what. Can you share with the audience what what does it take to create those videos? Because I think you probably have a lot of fun in the background uh, creating them. I, I think it's it's with, with your green screen and your costumes uh, definitely does. Yeah. Do, do, do you have a do you have a costume shop that you go to? That you do? 
<laughs> no, we 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 we've got uh, quite an extensive range of them now. Um, mostly about the wigs. People comment on the wigs mostly, you know. So I'm sure they think this is a wig as well. But um, uh, from from a creative point of view, you know, I think the important thing is to surround yourself with smarter and more creative people than you. Because everybody, everybody thinks they're funny, right? Everybody thinks they've got a creative gene. Everybody thinks they can sing on karaoke or whatever. And the reality of so, is somewhat different from that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I, if, if I could count on the, or, or, or if I had a pound for everybody who'd said to me since they found out I've done stand-up comedy, here's one for you. I'd, I'd have at least 17 quid at the moment, you know? So it, it's, it, it really is. Everybody thinks, and most of them, by the way, most of them would get Bernard Manning cancelled off TV, by the way. And I'm like, I'm not going to tell that. And it's not funny, you know? No, it is. It's funny. No, I'm not telling it. Um, so so I, 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 I think, you know, from, from um, that creative process, yeah. it's, it's about... Uh, get, getting in a room, kicking ideas about, mm-hmm. or, or getting over email, kicking ideas about, right. what about this, what about that? Uh, on, and then scripts being formulated. Um, mm-hmm. What about, oh, we can't say that. What about saying this? What about, and just getting to, to the fun, you know? So sometimes I'll come up with the idea and send it to my mm-hmm. guys. Sometimes they'll just come up with a completed script and I'll go, that's it. That's it. That's mm-hmm. genius. Um, or sometimes I'll say, uh, we can't say that. That's That's technically incorrect to say that you know those bits and pieces but i think for them i think for them their goal is to strip any remnants of dignity away that i may have had so (laughs) so that's the the guiding principle Mm -hmm. i'm and i'm I'm sure they want to make me that i'm sure they want to get me to a point where i just lose it become a diva and walk off set (laughs) (laughs) permanently that's that becomes the permanent the permanent character yeah yeah, yeah. the the driving i've been close (laughs) once i've been close once it was the (laughs) cyber girls video i did and it was different dresses right and there was one that was um, the the, the alternative of the spice girls one i remember that one yeah yeah yeah. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. but most people most people are still having therapy (laughs) for it now um, but I, it was one of the dresses for Victoria was so tight and so clingy. I just felt really exposed in it, right? I just felt really exposed. If I was blessed in certain parts of the department more than I am, I mightn't have had a problem, right? But um, I was like, I can't do this. It's really, un- I, and they talked me around and they did it. It was one of my best videos actually to to, to do. But it, I, I, I think it's, I think for me, and I hope it comes across in the videos. We just have so much fun doing it, right? Yeah. And and we have loads of bloopers that we generally don't put out, and every now and again we'll put out. But but it's just so much fun in doing it, and a lot of it is is my is my background, is my mm-hmm. upbringing from Liverpool, is my working class upbringing, and watching the likes of mm-hmm. Tommy Cooper and Morecambe and Wise and yeah. um, Cannon and Ball and. All of those guys, and then and then Billy Connolly, who's my Billy Connolly's one of my favorite. He's one yeah. of my all time. I was fortunate enough to get to to see him live in, in Belfast yeah. many years ago. Yeah, yeah. and just yeah. just watching him talking about one thing, and then he segues off into so many other jokes, and yeah. eventually he's like, oh, "What was I was originally talking about?" And he and he finally winds himself back to the original. And it was, you know, that's for me definitely. A, I, I I enjoy good comedy. I enjoy a good laugh. Yeah, and I just feel that in the industry, you know, I I would love to see more of it coming back. I remember just in my early days of the career, I just I remember every day in work, I couldn't stop laughing, and I've been fortunate enough to be in company. I've been fortunate enough to be in companies over my career where that's continued. That you surround yourself, and it does sometimes it might not be the company culture, but it might be your team's culture yeah. that you can still have that you know that good laugh and enjoyable. Um, there used to be I remember there was one person on my team that always kept me entertained yeah. he was just he was we you know i used to be responsible for a large support team and it's a, when you work in support you get a lot of really kind of intense calls yeah. people's angry people's upset um and this one per- person always reminded me was like he was like the most kind of calmest person when those types of calls come in mm-hmm. and he would turn, always turn it into something entertaining mm-hmm. he would always be able to turn it around and the end the person on the phone would end up laughing um, especially in those very tense moments. And I think we definitely need, you know, people that are really good at being able to do that in the industry. 
Um, and I definitely think, you know, I've, I've worked in a lot of incident response where I, I believe that um, we need to surround ourselves with people that can actually make sure that we can actually, you know, recover from those intense moments to get us out. Because I think comedy and entertainment is what helps us get back on track again. Mm -hmm. It was helps put people back in path. And unfortunately, I've seen a lot of, unfortunately, you know, people leaving the industry because of burnout and other things. And I think that, you know, entertainment and comedy is a good form of therapy. And um, it's a good form of kind of, you know, keeping people just connected and, and communicating. Um, so for me, it's, it's such an important area. Um, and, and so for when you're producing them, how long, how long does it roughly take? I mean, these, for me, I, I, I get, I mean, I, I produce a lot of content yeah. and when I see some of the stuff you're doing, I'm like, it must take weeks to, to, to do the editing, um, the kind of the scripts, the content, uh, ordering the costumes, trying the costumes on. It must take a, kind of, wh how long does it roughly take to, to create the content? I think for, for a, um, for a uh, bespoke animated video for somebody, for instance, it'll be a five-week process, right? It'll be from initial idea, coming up with those, pitching those, storyboarding them, uh, writing a script, getting the sign-off on the script and the ideas, uh, doing the first rough draft, getting them to sign off on that, and then doing the final edit and stuff like that. That's, that's like a five-week process. Um, on, the, uh, on, on the live video, that's a little bit shorter because the animation just does take longer. Mm -hmm. So it's probably two two weeks on on the live one if we can okay. agree the the um, content and the script and things like that on on the videos for for what I put out on LinkedIn, which which is twofold really. It's it's to raise my profile and and obviously entertain and educate. But hopefully, as the raising of the profile, people will come in and say, "Oh, I like what you do." I like the animation stuff. Can we mm -hmm. get involved in this, 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 and this? Yeah, um, which which would be great. But but we've got the um, we've got the video stuff down to a fine art now. We kind of mm -hmm. know where we are in terms of script. What we've mm -hmm. started doing recently, we started filming in different angles, which is and it's going to sound boring, but it adds more depth to what you see for the final rather than just a straight oh, on. Just straight, straight. You have the side yeah. and then okay. Yeah. But you actually film in the scene three or four different angles three or four times. It mm -hmm. takes a little bit longer. So it's taken a little bit longer now because of that. But the output, I think, is much better. One of the best back-end compliments, backhander compliments I ever mm -hmm. got was somebody who turned around and said, um, I don't think I'm interested in that, the poorly produced. And I'm like, do you know how long it takes to make them it's... look poorly produced? You know, <laughs> that's that's the skill. Yeah, that's that's actually that's a, a lot of the ingredients goes into making it that way. <laughs> it's almost a bit like Acorn Antiques from Victoria Wood. You know, when the set would shake behind and all that type of. So, so it's almost all of that comes into to the mix. Um, and I think people who don't get that don't then get the sense of humor. Mm. They're probably not in my target market anyway. Yeah. Um, and and they're a wonderful tool to um to qualify people in or out straight away, you know, mm -hmm. because actually they'll either go, Yeah, that's not for me, or love what you do, how can we get involved, you know? So it's um but but as 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 we and, and it's still in its infancy, mm -hmm. really, you know, that the company is is just over a year old. Um and it feels, on, feels like much longer. Yeah, I, 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 I for some I, reason I to be honest that it feels like years already. It feels like we're on season five. <laughs> I know. Well, it, it's. I, I think because initially, going back three or four mm. years, I started to make more of an effort with LinkedIn and to start mm. using my profile. And I was VP of a different company then and doing bits and pieces and helping them as a startup. So I thought I'd raise the profile, help raise mm. the profile of the company, blah, blah, blah. And out of that came CyberOff. So out of doing that stuff came mm. the idea for CyberOff. So without that stuff to begin with, it wouldn't have evolved into CyberOff. And really, as a kind of going business concern and a formulated limited company and all that type of stuff, it's it's about it's about eighteen months old or something like that in truth. Yeah. And then you know now it's about uh, raising the profile, getting more customers in, and more and more people are being turned on to the fact that um, fun is required, especially after COVID and stuff like that. Fun is required. People aren't engaged enough. And I keep telling people, if you want to get more people to pay awareness in the awareness side of things, you have to give awareness a personality. And most of the mm -hmm. time now, 
it just does not have the right personality. You know, it has the personality of mandating training on people. Enforcing, pushing, yeah. not not really yeah. kind of getting it to the same level of enjoyable. You know? Yeah, exactly that. And and almost almost trying to trick them with fishing tests, you know. I, yeah. I, I get I get the value. People say, oh, your fishing tests work. And so I get the value of the thought mm-hmm. of fishing tests, right? I get the idea if we show them what a bad um, fishing approach is, then they'll learn from that. And I always say to them, mm-hmm. but when you were taught by your parents about not putting your hand on the hot stove or in the fire, did they yes. put the tip of your finger and <laughs> stick it in the fire or stick it on the hot stove? <laughs> did they, did they throw, throw your hand in it? Yeah. Exactly that. So, so, and then people say, well, it's like the it's like a fire alarm. No, it isn't. It isn't like a fire alarm. We do fire alarms because health and safety regulations say we mm. have to do it, and it's in law. It's legal. We do fishing tests because the vendors have spent a lot of money in marketing that this stuff mm. works, and it gives us a tick in a compliance box. It does mm. not make anybody any better at spotting phishing attacks or making them fall fall foul of phishing attacks. We will all fall foul of phishing attacks. And I think that's the bit we have to realize. It, it's the um, impact. It's what happens after. Because exactly. if you're telling, I always, the message to tell people not to click and stuff is telling them not to do their job. And that's counterproductive. It doesn't, you know, the internet's great to click on. The, the button in the mouse is to click on things. Yep. The browsers are to click on yep. things. And ultimately, your job is spent probably most of the day is clicking on things. And yep. to tell people not to click, these are the bad things you don't click on. These are good things. What we have to do is become, you know, much more is, is what's the result of the clicking in it? And how yeah. do we minimize that? How do yeah. we make sure? And there's also a big gap as well that a lot of people don't realize what security is in place, what they're protected against, what they're not protected in, yeah. against as well. So transparency between the security controls and the people is also needs to be, you know, better communicated as well. Um, I, I, loved, I loved one of the things that I think, I think what we have to do, me, me, you, and Jake, and a few of the others, and Dan, is we have to get together, and we have to do the next. The next version of this is the cybersecurity is a, is a reality TV, a reality TV show. I think that's the next one, the next step. And I I always laughed at uh, won the uh, European uh, Bloggers Award when Jake said, you know, what was it the uh, the, the influence the influencer award, the Love Island one. I <laughs> laughed at that so hard. Um, so so. Maybe, maybe the next the next version is you know is a security reality TV show. <laughs> it's the next the next phase of this. Maybe um, maybe a version of the Kardashians or something. The Kardashians, yeah, <laughs> clicking on things and seeing bad things happen. I'm working on a Kardashians video, so be warned. I, I, I if you have if you're taking taking <laughs> requests, I would love to see a Father Ted and a Mrs. Brown. <laughs> oh, so so I mean, Father Ted would just be. Would just be amazing. I could do Father Jack right now. You know, it's just um, maybe maybe a version of kicking Bishop Brennan up the ass. Maybe we'll do a version of that episode. That would be brilliant. So, so I definitely, you know, if uh, at some point when when I'm in coming over, maybe I can also you know make a guest appearance as well. <laughs> awesome. But I'm not. I'm not. I'm not up for the singing part. I don't know. About me. Neither am I. my voice. <laughs> you, you, you do, but you. When you've got the music going, you can put a tune. <laughs> you can, you can make it go. <laughs> so there's, but it's, uh, definitely, it's, you know, because I keep saying to them, mm-hmm. um, uh, let's do a Frank Sinatra or a Dean Martin one because I'm okay at crooning. Yeah. Right, most people are okay at crooning. Let's do that, and they're like, no, they're gonna pick like the communards or stuff like that. It's something I could just never do in a million years. <laughs> it's always brilliant. So, so you, you won an award recently. <laughs> so, uh, can, can you share a little bit about, uh, you know, the award itself and, uh, you know, what, what does it mean uh, for you? And you, because you, know, you, you've, I've seen you in, 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 in Dickie Bowes and dressed up, you know, giving awards. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, which is also great to see and entertaining, but, um, I think it's fantastic to see you, know, you receiving an award. So it's, you share, share a little bit about what, what happened. Uh, so, so it was the European Vlogger of the Year yeah. thing, for, and, and it, was for my, it was for my Cyber Girls video as well, <laughs> which, is, which is amazing. I think I've, uh, I've scarred enough people that the vote for me on the proviso that I'd never do anything like that again. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I think what's nice for me for awards is, is other people find it useful, and other mm-hmm. people find it useful enough to vote for, um, which is kind of cool. 
Um, I, I, I think the, the awards I like it, and, and when I was a player, the awards that I mm-hmm. I put more stock in was the supporters award of the year mm-hmm. or the players player award of the year because it's voted for by your peers or the people who are yeah. watching you. And those are the things that meant more to me than, say, the manager's one or the chairman's one or stuff like mm-hmm. that. They, they they never really meant too much to me. So so to to be voted by others is awesome. I think I I, I think it's something that we can get carried away in. To be quite mm-hmm. honest, you know, we haven't split an atom here. It's not a Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> you know, it's a bit of wood with plastic on it. So, well, well, to be yeah. honest, I mean, I I would say you know, it, it, as I mentioned earlier, what you're doing is important to to help with mental health and, and the stress and burnout in the industry. And for me, you know, it is, you know, you you have probably helped a lot of people that, you know, woke up one day and, and didn't feel good. And you give them, you know, a couple of minutes of entertainment and change their outlook for the day. So, you know, I strongly believe that that's, for me, you know, we, we need a good way to tackle the burnout and mental health in the industry. Yeah, yeah. And what you're doing is definitely having an impact. So for me, you know, that's what, that's what, for, when I looked at, it, you know, giving the award to you, that's what it meant for me, um, was the, the, the how you're helping people in the community. Well, that's that's very kind and humbling to 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 be quite honest. I think that's a that's a nice hmm. byproduct. You know, I I think I could turn around and go, oh well, that's what I set out to do. But I didn't really. You know, hmm. I set out to to make a bit of cash and buy a place in Barbados. To be quite honest, with you. <laughs> but no, I didn't. I didn't. Um, so so, but um, no, I I think I I, I set out. Hmm to kind of bark at the security moon. That's what I set out mm-hmm. to do. I set out to call out the terrible practices that exist in our industry that make us mm-hmm. that make other people not want to invite us to office parties, right? That mm-hmm. gets us the reputation of the the um the company that likes to say mm-hmm. no or the department that likes to say no. That where people think we are arrogant, we do operate with hindsight and we do talk down to people and we're mm-hmm. quite condescending. Almost like you're going into an episode of the IT crowd where you can't enter into mission control yeah. for fear of being savage. I wanted to change all of that and change mm-hmm. that perception. And hopefully, hopefully I've I've done a, a little bit of that. Um, and also as well, I kind of want to change some of the food that gets out there from mm-hmm. vendors who should know better and are still still spunking VC money up against the wall from a marketing point of view. And mm-hmm. not in and a profit, but are considered industry leaders in their field. I'm like, what's that all about? What is that all about? Because that's just a self fulfilling prophecy that those guys mm-hmm. are up with to say we're, you know, market leading this, world leading that. Mm-hmm. Like, that's just market and bullshit. And I think I, I want to be the voice that other people wish they had, but can't mm-hmm. do it for whatever reason. And maybe that's where the mental health comes in. To turn around and call bullshit on all of that stuff and on all yeah. those people, you know. So no, I think that's that's an important message, and it's one of the things you know. Even when I do go to events, I'm walking around, looking at the messages, and trying to see, you know, what is real value. You know, what 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 is the things that's really changing, you know, the society for the good, or what definitely makes an impact. And I think we, you know, that's the message I would like to see the industry start to focus on mm-hmm. is. The message of you know how are we helping people do their job better? Mm-hmm. How are we helping society? And I love Miko's recent you know he tweeted out recently, and I mentioned this in the previous episode was around we're no longer protecting computer systems, we're protecting you know society, yeah. um, and that's what it's extended to. And we have to realize that you know at the end of the day, it's about people, and yeah. uh, it's about you know helping people's lives be better. You know their lives basically you know be be much more fulfilling. Yeah, um, and and we are an important part of of making that happen. So so absolutely, I I agree. And you know, I've heard people say cyber is a people problem, but they do it in a negative way. Cyber cyber is a people issue, but I also think the people are our best hope for the future. Almost like a Star Wars, a, a New Hope, and stuff like that. But I don't mean from mm-hmm. the point of view of trying to build human technology on the back of it or use terrible terms like human firewalls and things like that because because no change firewall for shield because that's where that term comes from human shield and look at what a human shield is see if that still resonates Mm. when you when you realize the derivation of where that comes from again it's marketing bullshit i think we need to show more compassion and more empathy and we need to be able to connect with people more 
And I think that's what the videos are meant to do, connect to people more. So when people see me mm -hmm. at events or whatever, they'll go, all right, Murph. And I've had that recently. And it's a weird yeah. thing, right? It's a, it's a weird thing. And I'm ultimately humbled. And, and thank you very much for mm -hmm. those people who, who do that. And more people come up and talk to me, by the way. It's no problem. As long as you're buying beer or coffee, we're all good. <laughs> um, so, so, but it, it's, it's almost that where, where you think, actually, you've said something or done something enough to touch somebody that they feel they know you, that they can come up and use your nickname. And I'm like, that's cool. That's brilliant. I, I'm, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm happy then, you know. It's, it's yeah. just, I, I've even had it when I've been out having dinner, you know, and somebody's gone, yeah. Are you are you Ian Murphy? And I always pause and think, do I owe you money? Have I? Did, 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 have I? What, what are you after? What do you want? <laughs> no, uh, no, that's my brother. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a pretty Belfast thing to do. <laughs> like, that's that's a, you know, if, if anyone talks about zero trust, I will say, you know, it came out of Belfast. <laughs> you just don't trust anybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was all about, if, if, if you wanted to know the origin, it wasn't Forrester, it was Belfast Society. <laughs> so, <Absolutely. laughs> anyone ask you, what, what, what's your name? Well, uh, <laughs> Mickey Mouse is typically the common <laughs> common response. <laughs> so, um, but for for you, what um, what's next? What's what's your next plans? Uh, you know, what's uh, any you, you know? I would love to see this turn into a Netflix series. <laughs> that would be my 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 yeah. you know wish. Um, but you know, because because I think it's great for social. But I really think that we you know we need to take this to to global to mainstream. It needs to go. It needs to get broad. Yeah. Um, I, I'd love it to see yeah. to see it go further. I I, I want to make cyber off, cyber off the headspace of cyber. So what Headspace did for meditation and mindfulness, mm -hmm. I want us within Cyber off to build a community to do a similar thing for Cyber, to, to raise the awareness of it, mm -hmm. to help people improve their savvy. savvy. I'm redoing the website. I've, I've got an app built and all that type of stuff. So I want to build mm -hmm. a Cyber community around the funny content, but I don't want it to do it in a boring LMS type point of view. I want to do it in like a an iTunes approach where you're creating playlists for friends and families to go and watch that stuff and other people can create playlists and then other people can put their own content in and stuff like that. So so, so that's kind of what, in, in the back of my mind, the, the grandiose plans. The, the more immediate stuff is uh, I'm off to the Fringe next week um, to see a couple of friends of mine who are performing. I'm probably going to perform there next year. So it was a little bit too late this year. So I'll probably perform there next year for a couple of weeks, some, something like that. That's that's in the works. And the Fringe, that's the comedy show in Edinburgh, isn't it? The Fest, yeah, yeah, the Fringe Festival. It runs for the month yeah. of August. Um, so I, I may try and do a couple of weeks. My other plans are to do more stand-up. I've got several mm -hmm. um, several corporate gigs kind of in the works mm -hmm. for, for people who want me to present a different view of awareness. I've just come back mm -hmm. from Budapest of doing one for a corporate over there where I kind of mix an awareness presentation with mm -hmm. stand-up to almost do a Connolly-esque meandering of around mm -hmm. awareness to get back to a point that I didn't know I was going to make in the first place. Because <laughs> I love Billy's point of not writing stuff down, trying to do it from experiences and trying yeah. to be like your funny friend down the pub who can tell those stories, right? So, um, oh, that's so right. my childhood, my childhood, I, I worked, I was a barman for many years and that's, <laughs> it's, you know, people, people who can capture and hold an audience in, in their hand, 10 or 15 people around them in the pub whilst they're telling a story, you know, that's, yeah. I've, I've no load to them in my life and they're just funny, funny, funny people. So to do, mm -hmm. do a bit more of that, do a bit more corporate gigs, awareness months coming up, I'll probably, I was just thinking about awareness, but what I'll probably do on LinkedIn and other socials, mm -hmm. I've got about, I don't know, 60, 70 videos now. I'll probably mm -hmm. build awareness month with maybe three videos a day just to give people mm -hmm. a view of what's gone on in the past. And you, you know, you're trying to get my productivity, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but my mental health increased. Yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> so. And, and then actually, I've I've just released an early adopter program for cyber off where I think to get more organizations involved, you've got to give them a say in what's coming out from a topic point of view. So the idea of the early yeah. adopter is a, sub, a monthly subscription service to a new animation that isn't released on socials anywhere. So it's just purely mm -hmm. for the paying early adopters. 
where they then get to vote on the topic that we develop the animation about. And we may give them three, Fantastic. three ideas of animation. So they get to vote on that. Mm-hmm. So then that may be passwords in an Indiana Jones style type of thing, you know, so <laughs> or or um or vulnerability scanning in a James mm-hmm. Bond style or stuff like that. So mm-hmm. so we'll do that um for the early adopters. So I, I've got I've got seven much to my surprise, because mm-hmm. I thought my niche would be kind of SMEs and stuff like that. I've got mm-hmm. several large organizations who want to take me up on that. I mean, large organizations as well. I mean, I, I definitely think there's definitely there's there's a place for this in large organizations for sure. Yeah. Uh, it might yeah. have to be you know tailored for depending as I mentioned you know geographical yeah. locations. It might have yeah. to be tailored for certain elements in the organization. Uh, but definitely, I think you know our, we we need to stop taking sometimes everything too serious, uh, yeah. and we need to sometimes make fun of ourselves a little bit, um, okay. and uh, and enjoy and you know get the balance okay. back. Where you know it's all about entertaining, so um, yeah, that's I think that's that's where the future of cybersecurity should be is about making yeah. it enjoyable, a place that uh, we all we all feel included and inclusive and um, and entertained. I, I, indeed, and and I think anybody who may watch my stuff or see my stand up mm-hmm. or whatever and, and think, oh well, it, you know, he may be offensive at those bits and pieces. Please, please rest assured that I don't care what your opinion is, right? Please rest assured that your opinion is your opinion. It makes no odds to me. But I never go out and I never set out to offend people. Never, ever do I set out to offend people, you know? So... No, it's absolutely. I think it's always important, you know, and, and that's that's a cultural thing. That's you know, I was brought yeah. up the same the same way. Is that you, you're there to to you know look at a specific kind of topic, um, but it's yeah. not to offend anyone. It's you know, at the end of well, the day, yeah. is that usually the biggest people we offend are ourselves. <laughs> so. Exactly. That. So that's why I'm the butt of all my jokes. And you'll know, growing up in Northern mm-hmm. Ireland, right? If you offended somebody, you were likely to get a smack in the face from it. So <laughs> you knew it. You knew it immediately, way, right? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, it was immediate, immediate response. <laughs> so there's Absolutely. been several times that I've had a Guinness poured over my head. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, those those are you know, the, <laughs> those would be moments we can we can chat in the pub over. So, but Ian, <laughs> Ian it has been it's been awesome having you on the episode. I, this has been, I think, for me. Um, it's so important to raise this um, and, and to get this message out and to really start changing awareness to being something that people can consume, that you know people can relate to um, and, and that people want to hear and enjoy hearing. So definitely keep up the amazing work. Um, and I, I definitely you know, think you well deserve the award and, and I'm pretty sure if there, you know, more awards will come, especially around the community side um and uh your content is definitely making a difference thanks joe i appreciate that it means a lot so so for everyone this has been awesome having you know the the vlogger of the year <laughs> on the show today and uh definitely you know um we we need to bring the fun back into cybersecurity. we need to entertain ourselves we need to enjoy uh every day uh because the most valuable thing in this world is time um, it's our time, and the more we, the more value we use our time, the more we use it wisely. Uh, the more fulfilling your life is going to be. Um, so let's make let's make our industry a fun place to be. Let's make it the place where all the people want to, to join in and and uh, and uh, be part of. So for everyone out there, you know, again, this is a four hundred one access denied podcast. It comes out every two weeks. You subscribe, go back and listen to the previous episodes, and definitely you get to hear more of you know awesome guests such as Ian. Um, and I definitely look forward to hopefully catching up with you sooner than later. Um, we'll definitely have a good time, uh, maybe to catch one of your stand-ups. Awesome. Thanks, Joe. You're welcome. Thanks, everyone, and all the best. Take care. Goodbye.